came from Scandinavia. Okay. The three territories that we know today as Denmark, okay. Norway, and Sweden. Okay. Norway literally means the northern one. Minute, one minute, one And Denmark, Sweden. Sweden. No way. Okay. Norway literally means the northern way, the northern sailing route, and it's one long coastline punctuated by fjords, while the land itself is broken up by mountains. Hmm. So it's much easier to get around by, by boat, of course, than by land. I mean, it, it was only ships. logical for that they were quick content, to for realize that area. the possibilities. I think they were very astute people that they could see quite quickly again through this maritime network that they had that there was a much wider world out there. And I think it's probably one of the most important aspects of the Viking Age that they were very much a people who looked outwards. They are exceptionally curious people and exceptionally brave in terms of where they want to go with their ships and why. The Vikings had dreams of exploration. I mean, I mean, in terms of, of why, you, look, for, let's be very uh, clear on a single line of thought, okay? In that era of uh, living, let's say, okay, um, how can I say, religion fueled much of the perspective into the world itself. So, for example, she, she mentioned of why they want to explore. Well, here's the thing. There's multiple reasons. The more, you, uh, I'll give you an example. So, uh, for them, if they explore and they find something they could take by force or by whatever, steal or like buy or whatever, and it's of a, an exquisite nature, in their, uh, in their religious perspective, they could use it for, uh, for after they, de they die and they go to their version of heaven, which is Valhalla, okay? That stuff that they saved up underground, okay or whatever can can translate into the next world in that perspective it's logical okay so that's one way to fuel plus okay uh, their lords was called fjord lords okay when they were fighting with each other eventually they made truces between each other you get my idea so one way to assure uh, entrance into valhalla was actually was well to die fighting okay it was a society based and a religion based on fighting okay that their supposed god okay will only equate a person into valhalla if they did something of high uh, that is highly appreciated or like of high value to the current society so for example if you know ragnar lothbrok although that the the, the story was not it's not like clear, uh, hundred percent correct, but it does show how the religion fueled Ragnar, and subsequently his children, and their ancestors and their uh, descendants. If you get, if you get what I'm trying to say, so religion, it was a society based on religion, okay, and that religion fueled everything, okay, so. The lords could not fight with each other. What do we do? We go outside and we fight and die. Or you go outside, exploration. You build up better boats. So, and conquest. So they needed a vessel. Exactly. To match. They needed the a vessel to match. Ship. The long ship. Remarkably, some still survive. Well, of course. If we're talking about freaking hardwood, you're talking about hardwood. What the fuck do you expect? I mean, it's hard work in that. This is a so-called Osberg ship, uncovered from a burial mound south of Oslo in Norway in 1904. Hmm. It's now in the capital's Viking ship museum. It is the oldest Norwegian Viking ship. Did they restore it? Ninety-five percent of its original timbers survive. This Viking ship was preserved like a tinned Viking ship. Really. Okay. No one had seen anything like it. It was even so well preserved that one day the archaeologist found a bucket, like a huge bucket, okay. and in the bucket there were apples, and they were still red. That's amazing. How was it preserved the exactly? Features that made it such what an the effective fuck? combat ship. Okay, like I would understand the wood, but how did the apples uh, still stay red? Uh, it's not logical. What the fuck?
are also intact. Most important is its shape. The longship, a catch-all term for all large Viking vessels, okay. has a shallow draft, meaning that very little of the hull was below the waterline. This helped them move swiftly and in shallow water. Same concept as in the flying ships now that we use. Well, that the, the can only afford if you're rich. To enemy territory. In the beginning of the Viking era, it's really the speed at which they were able to attack that their ships just gave them mobility that was unheard of, essentially. That they can just round a headland in a, a fleet of ships and sail right up onto the beach. Mm. They can also go right up rivers and sail deep inland. That meant that they could attack targets inland in Britain and Ireland. In France, they sailed all the way up to Paris, up the Seine. In Russia, again, they're penetrating deep into the river systems. Soon, they ventured even further to the Mediterranean and the Middle East and oh. west across the North Atlantic. Their raiding ships had to withstand longer voyages and whoa. combat at whoa, sea. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Mean man, it's fucking, it's, it's fucking amazing. What, when you have will, you'll just go. Like, Im okay, imagine sailing on that ship from here to here. Raiding ships had to withstand longer On a ship that may maybe is moving at three, four, at five, six knots at max. From the 8th century, they were equipped with a large sail, which was supported by a massive block of timber called the keelson. Okay. It spread the weight of the mast and the strain of the sail when underway. Okay. When there was no wind, the crew would place oars through holes in the upper strakes or planks. Parts of the decking were kept loose so weapons and plunder could be stored underneath. And mm. it was designed to strike terror upon a rival. I think it probably would have been an incredibly awe-inspiring and terrifying sight that we know from the historical depictions that you know, these ships were highly decorated, quite a few of them would have been painted, and I think it probably would have just struck absolute terror into the hearts of people if you knew that when you saw a fleet of 5, 10, 15 ships coming around the headland, and you knew that they were full of warriors and that they were sailing directly for your little... How, how, little how many warriors would it house per, per vessel? I mean, a size like that should at least... A massive block of timber called... That they could sit there. I don't know about the if there's like an underneath area inside, but a, a ship that size could at least easily, easily handle like forty five. Like from 35 up to 50 people. Yeah. Could easily handle that amount. I mean like. Man it's fucking even more. And even if there's insight. Even more. It's fucking amazing. Seriously it's fucking amazing. Okay. So let's assume you're part of a reading party. Okay. And. On average. The, every ship has 40 like warriors. Okay. So 40 by, and you have a raiding party of 15 ships. You are fucking 600 warriors. Fucking 600 warriors. Man, the, uh, back in that time, this fucking 600 warriors were opening cities, man. They were opening fucking cities with 600 warriors. What the fuck?